What's wrong, Grandpa? I had a perfect life. Loving family and a magical shop. Till an old friend took it all. But he didn't get this. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Film Optics Review brought to you by the Drive-In Podcast Network. I'm your host, Christian, and this is day two of the election, of course. We're going to be uh, reviewing a movie here for you here in a little bit. Uh, today, we're going to be reviewing a new Netflix original film. Uh, this is an embargo review, by the way. Uh, Jingle Jangle, <laughs> A Christmas Journey. Oh, Play on words. First, first uh first holiday uh review of of the year man it's 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 time christmas christmas is in full swing the elections in full swing you know we're in we're in day two recording this at 606 p.m on a wednesday so that's a lot of fun how, how are you feeling about the other uh, election there hopefully tomorrow <laughs> we get the the last last state we need and the orange guy is gone <laughs> Come on, Nevada. I've never I've never visited Nevada before, but I'll be very shocked. Yep, it all comes down to envy. <laughs> Someone said on Twitter, they're like, <laughs> they said as soon as COVID's over, <laughs> if, if Nevada votes blue, that <laughs> they're that's like the first place they're gonna visit as soon as uh as soon as the uh pandemic's over. Wouldn't yeah. It? Yeah. And another news Kanye it. West concedes presidential run. Looks to 2024. Uh oh. It was so depressing seeing his name. Name on the ballot. Yeah. Not even on the ballot, just actually voted for in some states. Like a couple yeah, he thousand got like, people. Yeah, he got like 0.3% of the votes, which is crazy to think about. Like, okay. I mean, you kind of have a backing, but that's like, I don't know. I don't know if that's the percent of people who voted for him or the percent of fans he actually has left. So. We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> but uh, before we begin, oh, actually, I'm sorry. Uh, my my good friend Devin, my co-host, is here with me. Of course, I forgot to introduce you there. I'm sorry about that. But uh, the, the jingle yeah. to your jangle, the jingle to the jangle. Yes, exactly. The Pittsburgh to my Steelers. So seven and zero, baby. Yeah. We're getting there. Stairway to seven. Let's go. Very excited. But uh, before we begin today's review of Jingle Jangle, A Christmas Story, we would like to thank Netflix for allowing us to review this film early. And of course, you can listen to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, Red Circle, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, all of the major um, platforms out there for podcasting, minus SiriusXM, but we're slowly slowly working on that, just uh, waiting for them to accept our um, <clears throat> a little bribe, but that's all good. But of course you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at film optics. That is optics with an X. And we're going to have read the synopsis here. Devin, do you want to take away with the synopsis? Oh, sure. An imaginary yeah. world comes to life in a holiday tale of an eccentric toy maker, his adventurous granddaughter and a magical invention that has the power to change their lives forever. Forever young. <laughs> Yes, so it's a pretty nice little synopsis there. Uh, the cast here is Forrest Whitaker. We have Madeline Mills. Uh, we have Keegan Michael Key, of course, Sharon Rose, Felicia Rashad, uh, Ricky Martin. Ricky Martin. And, uh, Ricky Martin, yeah. We got Hugh Bonville uh, from Mr. Uh, oh, I was actually, I was excited to see him in this film for the time that he was in. Mr. Uh, Downton Abbey himself, Mr. Crowley. No, uh, <laughs> and of course this is uh, written and directed by David E. Talbert, <clears throat> and it's produced by uh, Lynn Sisson Talbert, uh, David E. Talbert, Kristen Burr, and John Legend, the man wow. himself. The man he does himself. it all. He does it all, and of course this is um, on Netflix. Well, it will be coming to Netflix on November thirteenth, the day after PlayStation Five launches in north america and other parts of the world and i believe on the 19th the playstation 5 will officially be av available worldwide so that is very exciting so technically two days after veterans day is when this uh movie drops on november 13th i think that yeah usually is on a friday so 
this coming up Friday, um, not this coming next Friday. Sorry about that. But yeah, man, this, so this is our first official holiday review of the podcast of the season 2020, trying to bring you guys a little bit of holiday cheer, a little bit of Christmas cheer, because that is what this uh, story is about. Um, I had a few concerns overall, um, just, just a small few little things, but I wanted to get your first initial uh, thoughts of this film, Devin. Like, did you feel like it was engaging? Uh, just, just, just lay it on us. So are we avoiding spoilers here since it's not out yet. Um, yeah, let's, let's avoid spoilers for sure. Yeah. All right. So I, <laughs> I'm sure you could tell, but I was not looking forward to watching this movie initially. He was not. I made it's, him watch it. <laughs> it's so, so early. I wasn't ready for Christmas to hit. What? It's November 4th, Devin. I just was not ready. It's like a avalanche and it's like 60 degrees out. Like I'm not in the, in the Christmas mindset. Oh you, yeah. You, you, you live in Illinois. So you, you, you will eventually be in the Christmas mood. It did snow last week. Oh, did it really? But only one day. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's like Ohio. So I, I didn't get, you. get put in the Christmas mood yet. I got you. But well, I, yeah, I will ahead. say I was pleasantly surprised. I was, kind of blown away here because okay. i was definitely skeptical because netflix and christmas movies <laughs> usually <Holiday. laughs> usually a recipe for disaster they yeah. just kind of throw 10 of them up on the service and hope one or two does anything Succeeds. yeah that is true well, what did we get last year uh well disney plus we had noel because disney plus came out like right before the holiday season um, there was like a few no there was one christmas movie last year that i'm planning on watching again this year on netflix called klaus that was very very good but i will i will have to say for um i i am i am a huge huge christmas person as you can tell i'm very excited that, that crap of a month october is over with we can put that behind us for another 365 days until the next Halloween, whatever it is, Christmas season. We are here. We are ready. I am. I am like. I, I'm pretty much like Carlton on the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. As soon as November first hits, turn on that Christmas music. You get into the good feels. You know, whatever holiday you celebrate during this time of year. For me and Devin, of course, it is Christmas. Um, I'm, I'm. I'm sure. I think Devin also celebrates Hanukkah. I'm not sure, but um. <laughs> that's Jared. Yeah, <laughs> and Matt. <laughs> Wait, does Matt actually? Sell? Yeah, I think he does. Jerry um, cheats and does both. Well, yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Who's the true? G- <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> I'm gonna stop right there. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna put that on. Um, anyway, yes, I I'm a huge, huge Christmas person. Yes, we all know that Thanksgiving is right around the corner, but it is Christmas season. It is the holiday season, and this. This movie definitely put me in the holiday mood because at first I wasn't sure how I was going to like it either. And I was like, you know what? It's at first I thought it was going to be more like a Hamilton. You know, they're kind of like rapping through. But um, no, it, it was a bit of a musical, but the songs were pretty good. Yeah. There was one in particular that. Um, um, oh, my gosh. What is her name? The girl who played uh, Journey, uh, the main character, the little girl. Um. Madeline Hetsen. Mills. Madeline Mills. Yeah. She was she did a very, very good job. But uh yes, this this movie actually definitely put me in the Christmas mood. Um there is a like there there, you know, there's a few silly, you know, subplots here or there, but at the heart of this movie, it is definitely like you know, the 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 main events that go on, it really makes you feel for this uh for this family, for these characters. Because it, it is a pretty sad story overall that obviously turns, you know, every Christmas movie, everything gets better by Christmas. Everything gets, gets better by Christmas. So, um, yeah, it is. It, it's, it's, it's one of those movies I think people should definitely check out. But um, I guess. Yeah, I was actually going to mention I, I, I like the songs, too. I was actually just on Spotify seeing if, if they're up yet. <laughs> Did doesn't, you really? It doesn't look like they are. There's, oh, there's like one. Those. I think Sounds uh, like that was like the Christmas spirit. It's like Usher did a cover of one of the songs. Oh, did he? And yeah, because he wasn't in the movie, so 
Speaking of, he was actually in uh, Bad Hair, that uh, Hulu movie that we never reviewed. <laughs> he was in Bad Hair for like maybe two minutes. <laughs> wow. Oh two my minutes. God, Usher, what are you doing here? This is weird. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I, I digress. But yeah, I really like the songs. They're nice and catchy. <laughs> I like the. Um, what was what was your favorite? I think song? my favorite was the uh, the work it out one towards the yeah. end, with that uh, that hammer clanging beat. Oh good. yeah, yeah. It's it's always good when a when a movie, let alone a Christmas movie, has memorable songs. I mean, I I literally still listen to Eurovision, the Husevik song, uh, the one that they no, sing towards those the songs end. Songs did not catch on for me. And yeah, and yeah, yeah, ding dong, yeah, yeah, ding dong. And then the uh, the song from um, uh, the Benz, you're like, we're going to get high, we're going to get baked to every inch of us is aches. I've listened to that a few times on my way back to the uh, old OHIO. So it was actually pretty, it was it was pretty funny. I, I liked it. But yeah, I'm right there with you with the uh, with the music. And it just, it, this, this movie, like, yeah, it's a Christmas movie. But like, it, it's, it kind of reminds me of uh, Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium. Have you ever seen that movie? Um, or no yeah, other, maybe, but I was, I was also going to say it reminds me of uh Willy Wonka, except without the child murder. <laughs> okay, there's no way to prove. No, actually, yeah, yeah, I, I actually that that's a very good point, actually. Um, yeah, it's I guess the Mr. Megorian Wonder Emporium part, you know, all the gadgets and this this big essential, this really big emporium that you know, main the main character, he's he's a toy maker and you know, he. It, it all it's it's one of those towns where it's it seems to always be Christmas all the time and you never know what the town looks like outside of the holiday season. <laughs> yeah. What was the town called? Cop Cobbleton. 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 They called it. It's a very Christmassy uh town name. And very, very British for you. Yes, yes. Oh, very I I like I really did love this. Like the side characters. We're perfect. Keegan Michael Michael Key. He's, yeah, when he when he came on the screen, I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> I was very excited to see him. I I liked his character. Um, you know, it was this it's there's there's just, you know, the 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 big thing that happens in this movie, it changes so much. And, and like I actually I felt I felt bad because it's like, you know, like the, this this movie is essentially all about family. And it's like, what, what is, what is Christmas without family? You know what I mean? And yeah. it really shows the importance of it and how, you know, certain, how, how, what, like one small event or one big event can, can affect so many people's lives to the point where, you know, they're just not speaking to each other anymore, or just, you know, lost contact and kind of just move on with their lives as if, you know, the past never happened. Or, you know, they're what do some people say? We're not friends, we're not enemies, just strangers. Like, I can't remember the actual name of the term, but yeah. Um, so yeah, since we are keeping it spoiler free, um, which kind of sucks, I, I would like to get into spoilers for it, but we got to do it for the, for the fans, for the listeners out there, because we are pumping this out, you know, a few days prior to the, uh, release of the uh film itself but yeah i think uh i think the thing that impressed me the most was the visuals like yeah i was pretty blown away because it's like pixar level animation brought to real life like especially um uh what was yeah. don juan diego was like ripped out <laughs> straight from toy story i was like what? literally that so good and then the robot <laughs> was just like wally it's insane. Yeah, yeah, very, very big Wally vibes. Who played Don Juan? It was Ricky Martin. It was Ricky Martin. Okay, okay. For like a hot second, I was like, "Is that Antonio Banderas?" I'm like, no, that's not Antonio Banderas. That, they, but yeah, it's like away. it's so easy for Christmas movies to cheap out on the visual effects. Uh, Noel is a great example. He Did you watch earlier. Noel? Um, some of it. I was going. It had some of the worst effects I've seen. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, there, there's definitely a few other holiday movies out there. You know, I would definitely like us to review. I believe uh, one is coming to Hulu. I mean, Hulu's been killing it with the October scary, you know, type stuff. But I think it's called, um, oh, my gosh, what is it called to Hulu? Um, Happiest Season, 
I think that comes out, I think, on Christmas Day. But, um, yeah, that one looks pretty interesting. Uh, I think it stars Kristen Stewart. Not, like, as kid-friendly as, you know, Jingle Jango. Uh, but, yeah, like you said before, you know, the the the, um, the songs are definitely on point. It, it, is, it fits so well with what was going on. And I guess I wanted to ask, who was, like, your favorite character? Because, like, there's some pretty good performances out of... Uh, out out of uh, this cast, I was Minus really it. I was really feeling the vibes that uh Forrest Whitaker's character was giving off. What was his name? Shit, um, oh, it's not showing it. Geronicus, 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 yeah, Geronicus Jangle. Like his something about his voice. It was kind of like Brooklyn, New Yorkish. His accent, it was yeah. like really soothing somehow. Oh, he's from Texas. Okay, see, I did not know that. Wow, it doesn't doesn't strike me as a Texas man, but yeah, um, yeah, Forrest Whitaker did a, a fantastic job. Yeah, you know, it's kind of a different his... character for him. He was kind of being like a timid, kind of shy, um, very very creator timid, type. Yeah. Not like usually what he hermit. plays. Yeah, like he he was like a hermit throughout the entire movie, just you know doing his own thing, and it it really made you it like his character came off as you know like you you feel sorry for him for you know whatever has happened in his life and you kind of just want to you know either just leave him alone or kind of in a way like help him at the same time and then you start singing and you're like okay forest yeah you. you did a pretty good job uh so i didn't i didn't know he had that much of a voice but um between forest whitaker and uh the girl plate journey she was really good you know uh, one of the main characters. Um, I would have to say the male lady. Yeah, she um, was. Uh, she, <laughs> she was feeling it. She was feeling it. Well, of course, you know Don Juan Diego. You know Ricky Martin. That was that was good. But um, yeah, I would have to say Forrest Whitaker definitely. And and the the dancing the trio game. that kept coming back. Oh yeah, the random dance. was the upper class townsfolk. I think it was called. No, that that was somebody. It, yeah, that's another thing. Everyone's like upper class. Like everyone has these like amazing jobs. They they live in these like nice little like winter cottages, and it just seems that like everyone just sells toys all year all year long, kind of thing. Everyone's these upper class townsfolk. It was like everyone was dressed so fancy instead of like. I don't know. Um, what was the other little kid's name that was with Journey? Um, I never really like. I kept hearing it. I was like, I didn't really care for his character. That was like the only thing of this. He was okay. Yeah, like it. It was yeah, but definitely Forrest Whitaker definitely um, for sure steals the show. I mean, Keegan Mike, Keegan Michael Key, like he he did a good job. You Edison know, was his yeah. name. Edison, yeah, that's that's what it was. Yeah, I I did not care for his character all that much, but I mean, it is what it is. But um, overall, you know, yeah, a great. I I think this is definitely one for the books when it comes to uh, a must watch Christmas movie. What about what do you think? Yeah, especially if you're looking for something new, because it, it is, is true. It is new and it's different. Hol- just don't watch Holiday. <laughs> I don't care if Emma Roberts is in it. <laughs> I, I can't vouch for it, but. I definitely hard passed it. I, I well, I was I was like like I was looking for a, a holiday movie for us to review because, as I said, I'm a very big Christmas person. But I was like, oh, holiday, and then you're like, Ugh. and then I saw everyone else is like yeah. on Twitter. I was like, ah, never mind. Just that title, you just know. <laughs> I mean, I like it's it's a pun, like it's a nice little pun, uh, but it's, an it's not. I don't even know what the movie's about, but I'm definitely going to be watching Klaus. And I actually wanted to ask you, Devin, are there any specific Christmas movies we could talk about really quick um, since, you know, we'll get into scores here in a second. But for Christmas movies, are there specific Christmas movies do you want that you watch during the holiday season? And if so, what movies do you consider Christmas movies? Like, I guess I could say uh die hard because i actually don't consider that a christmas movie i mean the the first one that comes to mind always is elf it's it's the classic right always, okay always gonna watch elf okay so besides like i guess christmas theme movies besides elf is there anything else that you watch um 
I was always a fan of of Jim Carrey Grinch. Oh, of, oh, of course. <laughs> I love that movie so much. Yeah, I, I was say- a big um. I was a big Jack Frost guy when I was a kid. That was a oh yeah. Joker. What whatever happened to that rumor that uh, <laughs> what's his name, uh, Mister Aquaman was supposed to be playing <laughs> Jack Frost or Frosty the Snowman? Yeah, Jack Frost little... is different. Yeah, that's where, that's where um, Batman is the dad and he dies. <laughs> yeah, or Mister Freeze. Peyton. Let's 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 get a mi- mi- um a Mister Freeze movie out here. A very sad Christmas story, but um, okay. So you would said Jack Frost, uh, Elf, and what was the last one you said? I'm sorry, I'm blanking on it. The Grinch. The Grinch. So okay. So is there any non Christmas movies that you watch that you like to watch during Christmas time? Because like when people say like Die Hard is a Christmas movie, for me at least, I think I think more in the sense of is it a Christmas themed movie. And like, even though it happens around Christmas time, I can't really consider it to be a Christmas movie, but I, but I started thinking of it as, you know, maybe it's just one of those movies that people like watching during the holiday of Christmas, the Christmas time, even though it isn't a Christmas movie. Cause I have a few as well. So do you consider Die Hard to be a Christmas movie? I don't know. I, I was not prepared for this. I don't have any examples. <laughs> oh, you see, I got, got you on your P's and Q's. It's all right. But yeah, just I just wanted to ask you this, but uh, really quick. So I guess for me, like usually my family, every holiday, we watch Polar Express. That's definitely a big Christmas. It's gotten creepy watch. over the years. The I, I think, I yeah, the, the animation is definitely dated, but I really do like the message. I think that's what really uh, keeps me coming back. Um, Home Alone's. Uh, one through three, Home Alone three, the best. One through three, the best, the best of the best. Home Alone three, that was definitely th- those are the movies I always watch every single Christmas. Um, I used to watch Prince of Egypt, uh, weirdly enough, uh, when I was younger, but that's more. I can't even say that's like an Easter movie. It's just a religious movie, but it's a pretty good movie. I like it a lot. Um, but I'm trying to think: is there any other Christmas movies that? Um, no, I would probably say Home Alone one through Home Alone one through three for sure. Um, and then Polar Express. I thought I had a third, but I'm kind of blanking on one right now, to be completely honest with you. But, um, I think what I'm adding to my list every single year now is actually going to be uh, Little Women, uh, Greta Gerwig's because that happens around Christmas time, it has it's very, very Christmassy. Um, type movie, but also but do you consider really it a cool. Christmas movie? Oh, uh, ooh, you see, I really because like it, it goes throughout certain times of the year. I mean, they hit Christmas twice, but there's this really big Christmas scene that happens. It just makes you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. So I can't really say overall it's a Christmas movie, but it definitely has some Christmas vibes. But um, I just remember so Harry Potter, like. It, I know they are not Christmas movies whatsoever, but like those are movies I always watch during the holiday season. For whatever reason, it's just something that I do, something that I've always done, and something I'll probably always continue to do. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. But yeah, I kind of like, I know I kind of threw that in there. I wanted to see what your answers are going to be. It kind of came to me last minute. So I figured, you know, our first Christmas movie, you know, we kind of get a little uh, bit into, you know, what, what we uh, normally watch throughout the year, but let us know what you guys normally watch throughout the year over on Twitter and Instagram. But uh, you want to get into scores for uh jingle, Jane, jingle, jangle, a Christmas journey. Sure thing. Sure thing. Sure thing. All right. So um, out of a hundred, I'll go first this time around. Cause I'm Mr. Christmas. I'm, that some people call me the king of Christmas, if if, if that's you know your preferred uh, formality for me. The no, kingle of jingle, kingle of jingle. Um, I would say because I didn't put up my letterbox review yet because I didn't want you seeing it. Because <laughs> um, I want I didn't want that swaying your decision. Um, I'm going to give this a solid. So letterbox wise, I give it probably like 
a solid three and a half stars. So I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it a seventy out of a hundred altogether. Man, I don't. I, don't I think understand. it's a very, huh? I don't understand. You're the Christmas guy. You're gonna give the lowest score I, to me. I am. I, I I am. Don't don't get me wrong. I I love the core. I, I loved everything about this movie. It was just it was a few things um that i wish it was it was like kind of silly subplots <sighs> you know what we're giving this bad boy 75 75 out of 100 75 out of 100 because there are other christmas movies out there but i don't want to like just give this one like an automatic you know like 90 or whatever just because it's a christmas movie but i will go as high as 75 out of 100 because i think this is a very good christmas movie but there are others out there to be seen for this holiday season. What about you? I mean, the number that came into my head was 85. Oh, okay. Okay. Because like I mentioned, the visuals were like, they were stunning. Very good. Yes, they were. They like, actually it put some time into this. <laughs> yeah. And it, it made you, it made you feel like I was glued to the TV the entire time when it came to this film. Like I was, yeah, I didn't buddy, buddy, the robot. Don Don Juan Diego, they like caught your attention. <laughs> Don, <laughs> man, uh, he is he he's a hoot and a half in this in this in this uh, in this movie. It's okay. So eighty five from you, seventy five from me. Um, uh, well, you know, I'm sure we'll talk about it a little bit after. But um, yeah, pretty much. Uh, it, mine was just more st- story beats. I wish there were certain things that would have had a little bit more backstory than what was, especially with King of Michael Key's character, if you know what I'm talking about. Like, it kind of just happened out of nowhere. You know what I mean? But, like, that that's, like, the Christmas thing to do, you know? Like, but anyway. But, yeah, so 85 out of 100 for Devin, 75 out of 100 for me, even though I am the Christmas guy. Like I said, I, I have to reserve judgment. I can't just, you know, give everything, you know, hundreds out of hundreds over here. But um, yes, very very good movie. I would definitely watch this again with friends and family. Um, I actually might I might watch it again myself just to put myself more in the Christmas mood at at some point. But yeah, so that pretty much concludes our review of uh, Jingle Jangle. Again, thank you Netflix for allowing us to uh, view this film early, um, and thank you all for listening. And don't forget to like and subscribe to us on our podcast platforms of your choosing as i said we're on every major podcast platform out there anyone you can think of pretty much minus sirius xm and make sure to check out the other shows on the drive-in podcast network over on the music city drive-in website at musiccitydrivein.com the link to the um website is in the description and that was devin my name is christian and before we say goodbye really quick we have we still have two more movies to review or two more things coming up within the next week or two, I believe. So on the sixteenth, we have our run review. That's uh, the movie coming out on Hulu uh, with Sarah Paulson and the Animaniacs. Very very excited to talk about that. Uh, we got the first few episodes, so we'll kind of be just be giving our first impressions of that. I'll definitely be watching the rest when that comes out. Those both come out on the 20th, but both of those reviews are planned to release on the 16th of November. So that is within two weeks time on, on a Monday. So we have that coming up and um, we'll figure out, you know, we have our new show coming out as well um, each and every Friday. So make sure to, um, you know, tune in for that as well. You know, this will be our, our second time back after a week of hiatus uh, from two weeks ago. But uh, yeah, we will see you guys in the next one. Peace.